Welcome back to the Hoods and Yanks, where we talk everything Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we'll be talking about the CONCACAF Gold Cup group stage match between the USA and Martinique. And this one, the Yanks will take a 6-1 to one victory over Martinique. And uh, this one was an absolute thrashing, a beating, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Martinique just got taken behind the woodshed, but we're going to talk about this in depth. Um, start the game, the United States played a 3-4-1-2 formation. And once again, just like as I mentioned the Canadian video, video that the USA is trying to play for their golden free throws to kind of close up with Canada. And they're trying to close that gap between them and Canada. I think Canada before the game was at plus six and the USA was at plus one, I believe. So yeah, because they only had one all win over Haiti while Canada played both their games already. And so the USA was desperate to try and uh, close the gap between the golden free throws between them and Canada. And so, let's see what they played and who they played in this 3-4-1-2 formation. So, starting in the back, as always, the keeper, we have Matt Turner. And then the defending position, we have Matt Miles Robinson, uh, James Sands from New York City FC, and Walker Zimmerman from Nashville FC. Miles Robinson, by the way, from Atlanta United. Then in the midfield, we have George Bello, um, Eric Williamson, George Bello being from Atlanta United, Eric Williamson being from the Portland Timbers. Gianluca Busio being from right here in Sporting Kansas City at their home fadi home stadium. Uh, Shaq Moore, which he's playing his in Europe. That's your midfield. And then your center attacking media, Christian Rodon for the Seattle Sounders. Um, and then up top you have Matthew Hoppe for Shaka in Germany. And then Daryl DK, who is right now with Orlando City, but is probably looking at going to a new move in the near future. So... We go right to the game summary, right? We have John Luca Busio takes a free kick but misses left. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to work his magic this time with his free kick like he did at Sporting Kansas City, but that's okay. 14th minute, um, Matthew Hoppy sends a cross in the Daryl DK and he just powers it home. It's one already it's already one nil Yanks, thanks to Daryl DK. Um, I knew this guy was going to be, we all knew this guy was going to be a brute. Excited to see him. And... Unlike Katie, so far, he's already off to a flying start. Then the 17th minute, there's a perfect ball laid off for Matthew Hoppy, but he's blocked. Unlucky for him. I really want to see... Unfortunately, he would not score this game, but uh, I really want to see him um, score. As he's, he looks sharp this game. I really liked him. He was fun to watch. Um, 18th minute, there's a free kick for the Yanks, and it looks like um, they try to do something now off the training ground and let, let John Luca Busio take it, but... Eventually, the ball finds its way to DK, and DK just narrowly heads it wide. So close. But don't worry, there's a lot more chances that are coming for the Yanks. <laughs> I mean a lot more, too. Um, 23rd minute, John Luca Busio hits it off the bar, and then this is just pure madness in front of the net. This is just a big scramble. And then eventually, uh, once again, the ball finds their old DK. He's first to it, actually. And he just jumps above everyone else and... I look like from my on the TV. It looked like he headed it in, but turns out it's an own goal. As he he did, yes, he did force it, but it looks like one of the Martinique players just squirpy and kicked it, trying to clear the ball out, just trying to be fancy with it. Just keep it plain, but because you know this is what happens when you don't keep things plain. You lead to your own. He kicked the ball into his own net, uh, and DK eventually. I mean, DK took credit for it. You know, he thought it was his goal, but even though he later gives his own goal, DK still will take credit for this, and it's 2 nil Yanks. The ball's in the back of the net. Doesn't matter how it happens, the USA has scored another goal on Martinique. In the 32nd minute, we go to Martinique has a brilliant look from a free kick, but it's just a whisker high. Um, almost troubled um, the keeper for the USA, Matt Turner, almost troubled him, but he catches the break this time. Then the 43rd minute, Walker Zimmerman gets a great look, but he strikes it right at the keeper. Come on, I mean, he, look, I, look, the keeper did a great job closing down his space. You know, he really uh, did a great job to make sure Walker Zimmerman did not, he was not able to sneak one past. But then it's halftime, and the ref blows this one super early. I don't know why. There was It was only in the 44th minute, and the ref, like, blew it 30 seconds before the final whistle of the halftime. And get this. No, there was no even injury, stoppage time, whatever you want to call it. He just called the, the half right there. And 
I don't know. The USC, they didn't really care, although I was interested. I was like, um, they'll probably hurt their chance, especially with this game. They're going for gold in So I thought that was a little interesting, but hey, yeah, it's halftime. USA is winning. But one thing is the U.S. defense, um, that whole half, it looked sus. It just a lot of suspect. Um, when at times the USA just became too lazy with it and just, just gave the ball easily. I mean, Martinique, unfortunately, unfortunately for them, they weren't able to really pounce on them, but they were able to create some trouble for them in the back. And that is one issue that I noticed with the U.S. defense. And I'll talk more about that after the game, but. The U.S. defense had to clean that up, and um, that, that could have been could have been crazy real quick, but thankfully it didn't. Game went on. We go to the 48th minute where Christian Rodon has a brilliant look, but it's a great save from the Martinique goalkeeper. And in the 50th minute, Eric Williamson sends a recycled cross after a fe uh, previous throw U.S. attempt, and uh, but he recycles it. Eric Williamson does, and Mayo Robinson gets it and he nods it in, and it's. Now, 3-0 USA, and this is, uh, right now, just unbelievable, you know, great turnaround from the Haiti game, although they are playing a, a inferior opponent, no offense to Martinique, but um, anyway, we go to the 59th minute where Dero DK just, uh, he has so much fun with this one, he juggles it over the defender's head, and over, uh, just sidesteps another defender, Vinci just blows past him. And all if he does is flick it up over the keeper's head, chips it, boom, 4 0 for the Yanks. And told you, Daryl DK, if I'm Canada, I'll be scouting him. You know, this this guy, I mean, I, I, I'm 100% sure he's going to start and play against Canada. And because at that earlier day, they were talking about who's going to start and who's not going to start against Canada. But I'm sure D, Daryl DK has already had his spot. Even in before this game, he was going to play. But I'll talk more about that. 63rd minute. Kellen Acosta gets just dusted. Poor defending. He defends the Martinique defender, Fortune too tight. All Fortune does is just take a touch past him, blow past him into the box. Acosta brings him down. That's an easy penalty for Martinique. And um, Rev Rev Revere steps up and takes this one. Buries it down to the, the bottom left. Nothing Matt Turner can do. He kind of even does a little hezzy before he does it. So he acts like he's going right. Matt Turner doves, doves right, but um, he goes left. And it's a goal for Martin Meek. The clean sheet is over. 4-1. However, the Yanks are still winning. 70th minute. Zardes does get a breakaway, though. And he takes his time. And finally, like previous game, he actually takes his time. Figures out as he goes high or low. He goes low, which is the absolutely right decision in this in this moment. He scores. He gets rewarded for it. It's 5-1 for the Yanks. And then we go to the 73rd minute where Zardes then has another great chance, but instead he defers it to uh, Nicholas Giacchini. Nicholas Giacchini tries his shot, tries to score his first goal. He's saved. And for a while, I felt bad for Nicholas Giacchini as... You know, he had shot after shot after shot, but just failed to break through this Martinique defense and even the keeper. as They were just kept getting great saves and great defensive plays from behind. So, once again, great credit where it's due. Martinique kept fighting until they couldn't fight anymore. And uh, that fight ended for them, unfortunately, really in the 90th minute where Gianluca Busio sends a beautiful ball uh, across to Nicola Giacchini. And finally, finally... Nicholas Giacchini taps him in and scores for the USA in the Gold Cup. And I bet this is a huge weight lifted off his soul. Off his soul if I can get this, guys, I can't speak today. Shoulders. It's a big weight lifted off his shoulders. As now it's 6-1 for the Yanks. He has his goal after all the trouble he's faced this game with a shot after shot. Finally, he breaks through. Big moment for him and the USA. 6-1. And then... The coaching staff and the U.S. Um, Greg Berhalter is saying, "Get back, guys! Get back! We gotta get one more with five at the five minutes of stoppage time." But with a little time left, the Yanks rush to find the goal. Uh, they they try and rush to find the goal that they would need to get the go ahead and goal differential. But eventually, after two, two or three attempts, they they just say, "Forget it. We're just gonna try and play our best against Canada and see what happens." And the ref blows the whistle. 
the end 6 to 1 and the Yanks are now moving on to the knockout rounds and the quarterfinals. Here are your final your current group standings with first place is still Canada even though they're both tied on goal differential. Canada has plus 6 goal differential but then we go to the goals 4 and that's the tiebreaker. If there's Canada has 8 goals for them while the US has around 7 I believe. But they also have 6 goal differential so Canada leads the USA by one goal scored. Now just think, if Kellen Acosta didn't give up that silly penalty, the USA would be ahead right now. But it is what it is. Both teams do have six points. Both teams are moving on to the knockout rounds. And then third place, unfortunately for Haiti, they crashed out of the Gold Cup this year with a negative four goal differential and no points. And Martinique had negative eight goal differential and no points as well. So... Fortunately for these teams, they crashed out this year, but there's always next time. There's always 2023 or whenever the next Gold Cup is for them, whenever they can qualify. So, unfortunately for them, not a tournament that's going to be worth remembering. But, bounce back next time, I can say. That's all I can say. We go to our stats. Martinique has 13 shots, and the USA has 22 USA really outshoots Martinique here big time. And then we go, they have, um, out of the 13 shots for Martinique, five of those are on target, while 12 for the United States have a 22 on target. 35% possession for Martinique to the U.S. is 65% possession. And then 294 passes to 510 passes completed. USA outpasses Martinique. We have 76 pass accuracy for Martinique for 80% pass accuracy, 86% pass accuracy for the United States. 13 fouls to 17 fouls, no yellow cards or red cards, one offside to two offside, and no corners to 15 corners for the Yanks. Yanks get a lot, get, Yanks get the majority of, they just dominate the stats. Let's just say it that way, they dominate the stats. And as I said earlier, humiliating performance from the Yanks. You know, but then again, you know, it's Martinique. This was expected. Even if the U.S. is playing a D team, it didn't matter if they're playing A team, B team, C team, D team, whatever the team is, they were expected to really put a number on Martinique, and they did so today. That's what I was looking for. I was saying, especially after the Haiti game, you know, I can't really compare Haiti and Martinique because they are two different teams, but, you know, give, it, give credit to Martinique. They really did try to fight, but unfortunately for them, it didn't quite go their way. But humiliating performance. I mean, the United States just really took Martinique behind the woodshed here. And, um, yeah. I mean, the United, poor, poor Martinique, um, they had to be, they were being farmed for goals as the USA was desperately trying to even up the goal differential tally after failing to score more than one goal against Haiti. So, but it is what it is. Unfortunately, um, Martinique got caught in the crossfire, and the USA was using them as the punching bag. But either way, Canada, I mean, the USA still has to beat Canada if they want that first place spot in the group on Sunday. So either way, all roads lead to Canada for this, for the USA. So for Canada, this is a plus because there's not really much pressure. All you got to do is just tie, and you're in. But for the USA, you have to beat Canada to get that first place spot, assuming that Mexico takes business against El Salvador. Once again, as I said in the Canadian video, um, it depends what El Salvador and Mexico do. If Mexico loses to El Salvador, then um, I think that um, they might avoid it, even if they get second place, but if Mexico wins their group and the USA wins their group, then they avoid playing each other until the finals potentially, if they make it that far. But uh, we'll see. We'll have to see how this all shakes out. That's fun about this Gold Cup. Many teams, many different unpredictable results can possibly happen. And then um, Daryl DK just went off this game. Um, as I said earlier, Canada really should scout this guy. He, I, he could be a threat. Um, just a great guy. You know, he really showed what he can do today against Martinique. Canada has to scout him because I'm hundred percent, hundred and ten percent sure. He will start against Canada for the USA. So, if I'm Canada, I'll be really scouting Daryl DK for this one. But the USA, as I said earlier, were fighting for a goal for in the game, but 
However, they do fall short, and Canada does remain first in the group by uh, goals four. Goals scored four, even though they both have equal goal differentials. As, a, as the USA didn't have enough gas in the tank at the end to try and go for that seventh goal. But um, other than that, you know, pretty good. However, there are a few negative moments I do want to shine light on. Keller, as I said earlier, Kellen Acosta's penalty. You know, you can't be playing that tight. And I think he's he learned uh, once Fortuna came at him again. Um, he kind of gave him a little space rather than he was tight on him. And because if he's, he was tight on him, he just got burned. Just, just poor, poor defending. And it led to a, a costly penalty and a goal for Martinique. And then, um, yeah, just... And for the defense, as I said at halftime, the USC has to clean this up for Canada. You can't get too lax. Because anytime you get lax, you can turn the ball over, make mistakes, and boom. That's how you get teams back in the game. So if you do that to a Canada team that's going to be hungry to win the group and lock up their points, you will, they will, you will pay. That's why it's important to get, take care of business now. But um, compared to the last game versus Haiti, um, Major question, can we see what's gotten better? The answer is not really. Because Martinique is considered an okay opponent, but when it comes to Haiti, Haiti is more on par like a Canada. Um, and that's why Canada will be the true test this Sunday to see what the U.S. learned from that Haiti game a couple of days ago. But um, I, I can't wait to see that. As again, I keep saying this over and over. Um, Sunday will be massive. It is going to be the group decider for potentially for Canada and the USA as a win or a tie with for Canada sees Canada through and first place in the group while the USA has to win to win the group. So the pressure is on the United States here. You know, if you don't win um, at all, you possibly face Qatar or Mexico. And I can tell you what, this Qatar team is seems really exciting to watch. So I mix mixed feelings on what what happened if we came across Qatar. But um yeah. Pretty much it, you know. This Sunday it all all rolls lead to Canada as they said. And um good news is is next up, you know, that's the next game and it's gonna be sold out for the United States. That is a good news for them. You are playing this on home soil and you're gonna be playing out from a sold out capacity crowd. And let's see how much of a momentum or a boost that gives to them trying to beat Canada for first place in the top of this group. But we'll see how that happens. That's a Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So if you like this video, make sure you like, share, like, subscribe, tell all your friends, and also share it. Also tell all your friends that all roads are leading to Canada for the Yanks.